Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. Hopefully, I have everything the same exact way it was when I ended the last episode. If you guys saw episode 8, I believe it was, that was probably not the most clean episode you've ever seen from me, but hopefully I can make it up to you guys in this episode. In this episode, we're going to be finishing up Rusty Bucket Bay here, and to do so, the first thing I want to do is come get this last Jinjo, and that just so happened to be the last one that I needed. The full- the- the fun thing, it's not really a fun thing, the cool thing about the Xbox version is pretty much everything you collect, if I can get out of here, that'd be really nice. Everything you collect, pretty much, will stay collected even if you quit the game or leave the level. I'm pretty sure, like I keep saying in the original, even stuff like Jinjos would not stay collected if you quit or something like that. And for those of you who don't know, this isn't like one huge long recording that I'm just editing or like cutting into episodes. This is actually a whole lot of play sessions put together, so it's actually a lot better for Let's Plays and stuff when stuff stays collected the way you did it, just in case something like last episode happens. But anyway, don't want to get too much into the technical side of things. In this episode, there's actually only four Jiggies that we needed to get, and I've already got one. The next one is actually probably one of the best placed Jiggies in the level. If you guys remember in the last episode, I said something like, Jiggies are, it seems like they're kind of haphazardly placed in this level. And for the most part, I think that's kind of true, just in my opinion. But the one that I'm going for right now, I feel like was actually a pretty cool Jiggy to get, just because, you know, it's a huge boat with a smokestacks and everything. Might as well climb all the way up to the top to get a Jiggy, right? Before I do that, though, let me go ahead and take out this guy. Are you kidding me? As I was saying, let's go ahead and take out this guy. I don't know, like, it seems like lately that rat -a -tat move thing is not <laughs> not working out for me, as you guys can tell. But I'm gonna need, like I said, 25 Mumbo tokens for the next level, so might as well get as many as possible. One thing I kind of hinted at in the last episode, but I didn't really go into detail, was if you see, you can move the camera pretty much fluidly around at any angle that you want in the Xbox version. In the original, on the N64, it was kind of hard to do that. It was like, you could be left of Banjo, like right behind him to the right. It was set angles that you had to be at, and you couldn't really fluidly, like, put the camera right here so you can run straight forward. It'd be like right here, and you had to, like, tiptoe back and forth to get in a straight line. But I think that's eight already for this level. Let me just go ahead and make sure real quick. All right, now the last two are kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie. And hopefully I didn't go in this thing over here yet. I, I will try and well, I'll be able to tell in just a second. But there is kind of a cool glitch, which I don't expect to work on the Xbox at all. Uh, it just seems like something that they would have fixed. Let me go in here. I'm not sure if I've been in here yet, but I need to if I haven't already. And it looks like I have, but I don't know if this... Yeah, I guess I needed to press that switch again. That Jiggy right there is not all that hard to get, but if you see over there to the left, there's another one of these fan switches, and when you do that, it makes the propellers on the back of the ship stop working, or like, just stop, and that will let you get the Jiggy down there. To do that, though, you have to run all the way out of the engine room, all the way out of the ship, swim in that murky water, you have like 60 seconds to get all the way out of there, and it's just a pain, but there is a glitch that could help with that, which I hope works on the Xbox, but like I said, I don't expect it to work. This is kind of a cool, if you see down there, there's like an, uh, a hole, there's two holes down there. If you fall in the one above, there we go, there's the other hidden honeycomb in this level, so that's both of the ones already. Where was the first one? I don't even remember where the first one was, to be honest. This is the engine room. Probably the hardest room in the entire game, actually, because if you fall off here, you, you're dead. I mean, there's no two ways about that. In the original N64 version, like, I, I think I've probably mentioned this before, too, if you fall off or if you die or something like that, all of the notes that you've collected go away. You have to collect all of them over again. So that is a really huge pain in, a, in an area like this, where it is really easy to fall off. That is why people will suggest that you collect all of the notes first, and then come in here. Like, it, obviously there's a couple of notes in here to get, but, you know, might as well get all of the notes you can, try as hard as you can to get all the notes in here without dying, and then you'll be fine. But if you're on the Xbox version, it's really not that big of a deal if you fall off, to be honest. And also, you can jump across these things while they're spinning like that, but I'm not gonna completely go ridiculous and try and jump across when they're spinning at 500 miles an hour. Because if you saw last episode, you know how my um, how my luck is. Alright, so now let's hit this one. I think there's two switches we gotta hit in here, but I guess one slows the propellers down a little bit. 
and one slows it down a lot. One thing I don't get really is the propellers are going down there, but the ship's not moving, so why are the propellers on? I don't know. Apparently that's all 100 notes. I wasn't even paying attention, actually. I thought... Oh, apparently I got them in the last episode. I just don't even remember. There were some notes in, on the, the front of the ship that I forgot that I got, apparently. All right, so now we need to get over there. Apparently on the tool assist of speed runs, like, they jump through these fans and stuff, like, while they're turning really fast and everything. All right, so... Once I hit this, I will have 65 seconds, I believe, to get out of this room. And as you can see, the propellers are completely off now, pretty much. There we go. But there's a glitch. Apparently, people found out that you can, like, walk through this wall if you just walk into it enough. And if I don't get it by, like, 30 seconds or so, I'll probably just leave. I really want this to work, though, because it, on the it's pretty cool. You, like, literally just phase through the wall. I'm not sure exactly where the spot is that you gotta go. Apparently, I've read that it's, like, right at the, cr the- Oh, it works! Yes! Oh, my! See, the little things in video gaming life where you just don't expect something to work like that, I just- I don't know why I like little things like that in games where you go through a wall. Like, basically, that's not really much of a- What do they call those in games? Like a- It's not really a sequence-breaking move, really. But when there are glitches like that that are actually beneficial to you, I think that's pretty cool. Alright, so I think that's everything in this level already. This was actually... I was only planning on doing this in this episode. How long has that been? Like, seven minutes or so? Alright. I guess... Let me go ahead and get out of the water here. If I drown, who cares? I already got everything in here. I don't even... I don't ever want to come back in this level again. This is going to be really close. Yes. Alright, so I'll use my trick to get out of there and save myself. Now that I've got everything, might as well go ahead... Well, it fell there. I might as well go ahead and get the the jiggy that the witch switch made appear i think i got that in the last episode if not i'll just check right now it's been two days since i recorded that which not, might not sound like a long time but i mean so much went on and you guys will be happy to hear that i got my coffee today before the episode so that is a first for this let's play i think <laughs> all right so I, it looks pressed down but just in case i'm going to go ahead oh, okay yeah, I was- I knew it was pressed, like I said, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, good. I thought I was gonna land on the box and die from, like, height damage or whatever. There's also another Cheeto book we can go ahead and get. It'll be the third and last Cheeto book, actually, so if you're an achievement hunter, that will be an achievement. And before the end of the game, there are actually- if you guys- you guys obviously know that when- to get into a level in this game, any level, you have to put jiggies into the, like, the paintings or the pictures or the jigsaw puzzles, I guess. And that will open the level. There's actually, back in Banjo's house, which we left at the very beginning of the game, there's a bottles picture in there that's not, it's complete and everything, it's just a picture of bottles above Banjo's fireplace for some reason. But anyway, if you look at it, you'll actually get, like, a hidden series of puzzles that you have to complete. So, I have to do that, or I don't have to, but I'm going to do that before the end of the game, or before the end of the Let's Play, because that'll actually unlock a whole bunch of other cheats. Alright, let's go ahead and get rid of that. This up here will actually lead to... Oh, I thought... See, every time Grunty does that, I think she's gonna react to something that I've done, but it's just kind of random. If you can hit this one up here, it will raise the water level up even more. You might think that's just to get to that note door right there, but you can get up there anyway without actually, you know, raising the water level. What that's actually for is if you come through here, back through to the Rusty Bucket Bay area, the water level will also be raised in here. And if you swim straight up above the door here, you can see the water level is way, way higher than it was before. There is somewhere up here, like a green opening, I think. There it is. Up here is the uh, third and last Cheetah book that I was telling you guys about a minute ago. And if you don't get up here in time, obviously the water level will go back down. Alright, so which one is he going to teach us this time? I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure this one's going to be the gold feathers cheat. Which I wish when you found Cheeto, he would give you cheats that give you unlimited of those items. Like he gave us the red eggs, or I mean the red feathers. I think he gave us an egg one too, or something like that. And that was a gold feathers cheat right there. I think all that does is just double your capacity for the eggs. If I'm wrong, I, I can't really remember, but I wish, if he doesn't do that, I wish that they were infinite, so. Alright, now where's the door to get out of here? Well, actually, 
No, okay, never mind. I need to go to Mad Monster Mansion. I, just, I thought of one more thing I can show you guys before I end the episode. This is actually going to be a really short episode. So the next episode, is <laughs> you guys are going to be happy if you like long episodes. Because the next episode is going to be the last... What do we even want to call it? The last level of the game. But it's really like four levels in one. So it's probably going to be a pretty long episode. But before I end this episode, I do kind of want to go ahead and go show you guys a secret. Another one. The th what third or fourth thing that I forgot to show you guys in Mad Monster Mansion. It's like they packed that place full of secrets and stuff for you guys to find, or me to find, I guess. And it's not really all that useful. It's not like the eggs, which actually have some sort of effect. You know, actually the eggs don't have any effect on this game, but they give you extra items and stuff in Banjo Tooie and Nuts and Bolts. But it's kind of actually, it's kind of just a kind of cool secret. So I want to show you guys. If you guys remember those windows we had to break out of the you know, the house here, it's kind of like that, but it's actually on the church, and it's a stained glass window, so you wouldn't want to break out windows on a church, so I guess that's their little way of hiding it, I don't know. Alright, so let's get over here. Every time the camera, like, changes like that, it kind of gives me a little twitch in the eye, because it's kind of annoying, but anyway, alright, I think it's this, no, it might be on the other side of the house here. It's somewhere around one of these windows you can actually go in, so... Excuse me while I check every single window. Maybe it's... I know- I just did this yesterday, so I know it's one of these windows. There we go! The one window that has Banjo and Kazooie on it you can actually jump into. And the only purpose of this room is to basically restock your feathers and eggs and stuff like that. But it is kind of cool. I guess there's an extra live there too. Life? Why did I say live? Whatever. <laughs> an extra life there. So that's all there is to that room. But, you know, kind of a cool feature. Now, I, I keep thinking of other stuff I want to do before I end the episode. I want the next episode to be set up completely pretty much before I... Well, apparently I can't go through there. I want the next episode to be pretty much set up before I start, because like I said, it's going to take a long time to finish that level, so I kind of want to actually finish the painting, or the picture, for that ep for the next level. And it's kind of different, in that we've already been to the area where the painting is, but there was no thing on the ground to stand on to actually put the jiggies into the picture, so that's, prob that's kind of like a unique thing about the level. So where do I want to go? How do I want to do this? Alright, to get to the thing to make the Jiggy thing appear- I keep saying things, but I don't know what to call them. At least I'm not calling them Jiggies. To get the thing to appear on the floor to put the Jiggies in, so I guess I am going to say Jiggies, you have to go back to- or go through another note door that we haven't even seen yet. Or you might have seen it- actually, yeah, when I hit that third water switch, you might guys might have seen it up there. We actually have to go through that note door to open up the last level. But, the painting for the last level was way back near Treasure Trove Co. If you guys remember way back then, when I told you that there was a, like a, a tunnel on the ground that, would go, we, that we would go through way later in the game, now is going to be the time for that. Alright, so now, where do I, where did I say that was? Oh, it's up here. I'm going absolutely insane. Apparently the coffee effect is wearing off. You gotta- uh oh, another thing, you guys gotta watch out for the- the mines in the water there. I have died to those before, so be careful. Get a nice little dance here from Banjo. And the next area is actually probably- this level is actually a lot of people's favorite level. If that's grammatically correct, I don't know. Okay, you know what? Let's see. Okay, I got a couple of these. I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm just gonna run through here. But a lot of people like the next level because it seems like it was more- well thought out than the other levels because like I said it's four levels in, in one pretty much but before I go in there now we're there we go this nice little hidden thing is right here and if we come down here there's another hidden magic pot I think is what I call them and that's actually a really good placement for that thing because as you'll see in a minute when I climb up on those leaves over there we are actually gonna need to use that that warp there. That's probably the only warp in the game that I can think of right off the top of my head that we really need to save time, you know, because otherwise we'd have to go through the whole entire layer to get there. I'm not actually sure what's through here. Might as well check, I guess, right? Leave no stone unturned. 
Oh, okay. Well, apparently we're getting a mumbo token out of that. So that was actually good because I'm five short of the required for the level. The thing, though, is that they they put so many extra mumbo tokens in the game that even if you only had, like, ten going into the next level, you'd probably still have enough. There we go, guys. Oh, apparently there's another mumbo token hidden in there. And there's a Brintilda right here, so let's go ahead and talk to her. Alright, so Grunty's favorite pastime is flying radio-controlled bats. That is awesome. I don't care. Alright, so the Greasy Grant was her first and only boyfriend. Alright. And, when she was younger, Grunty used to have a baby dragon as- Okay, that was actually a pretty cool set of information there. What was the first one? It was like a remote-controlled bat or something, and she had a dragon for a, a pet? I don't think that's really a bad thing. Alright, now that we've done that, we need to come down here in the warp. And if you guys didn't see when I activated this thing, it shows you the warp, or the other end of the warp here. There we go, so if I can get into it. It's way, way, way back near the Clanker's Cavern entrance. So it's kind of cool, I think, how they link like parts of the game at the beginning of the game with parts of the game at the end, I guess. But it is nothing compared to Banjo-Tooie. Banjo-Tooie will link pretty much every level is linked to at least one other level and probably more than one so i can't wait to do that game in particular all right so now let's go ahead and open up click clock wood probably my favorite level in the game and you can see that it only has one filled in so we need to put in a lot to finish this painting but that is nothing compared to the last painting of the game which we'll get to probably in one or two episodes from now you the whole frame is completely empty all right so let's go ahead and get the Mumbo to where is it at? There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk to Brentilda, and I'll probably just go ahead and end the episode, because, like I said, next level's really long. Alright, Grunty's nickname was Hog Breath. Well, that's kind of embarrassing. Nowhere near as cool as having a pet dragon. She has, what, Putrid Parrot Puke is her favorite smell. And the old hag's favorite color is Dung Brown. Nowhere near as good, like, information as the, uh, the previous Brentilda. But anyway, guys... I hope that episode was a little bit better than episode 8 or 9 or whichever one that one was, I don't know. We finished Rusty Bucket Bay in a pretty decent amount of time, and I showed you pretty much all of the secret stuff that I can think of before we can really make the push towards the end of the game. So, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. I want to see you guys back for the next episode.